Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. 101 Solve Mechanical Engineering Problems, HVAC 8. A retail apparel goods store is maintained at 75 degrees and 40% relative humidity, although the exterior weather conditions are 25 degrees and 20% relative humidity, so it's very cold and dry. A 10 mile an hour wind causes the building to lose 800 CFM of inside air, which is replaced by outside air. There are typically 35 sales clerks and customers in the store at any given time. In addition to the occupant load, a humidifier supplies moisture to the air. A, how much moisture in pounds per hour should the humidifier supply? And B, the store has several single sheet common glass windows. Will condensation form on the inside of the windows? So I've drawn on the right a simple air handling scheme. We have the retail store with about 35 people in it at any given time. And then we have this exfiltration that's causing the building to lose 800 CFM of inside air on a continuous basis. I've drawn that as exhaust air. It's not formally exhaust air because it's probably not being released through the air handler since they say it's the 10 mile an hour wind that's really driving the loss of that inside air. But from an HVAC perspective, it's irrelevant how it's being lost. The fact of the matter is it's being replaced by outside air, which is colder and drier and needs to be humidified in order to maintain the 40% relative humidity on the inside. And I've also made the assumption that the HVAC and humidification systems are either in series, it could also be integrated within the air handler, or it could be completely separate where the HVAC is doing its thing, whether it's heating or cooling, and then the humidification is being performed directly in the space or just separately. And it really makes no difference. The only time this might matter is if you had a case where the humidification was fighting the HVAC like in a cooling application. It's not the case here since we're heating. There's absolutely no latent cooling. There's no removal of moisture in the AC. So this gets a little more interesting when you have a cooling application that requires humidification. Uh, but usually it's the other way around in the summer. You're trying to cool and dehumidify. So here we are in the winter. We're going to be doing sensible heating at the air handler through some heating coil and then adding humidification to make up for the fact that it's very cold and dry. So a bit of a long-winded preview, but now let's talk about how we're going to answer their question, which is how much moisture should the humidifier supply? Well, the air that's in the space is at 75 degrees and 40% relative humidity, so that air is fine. That's being controlled at those conditions. But some of that air is escaping and being replaced by this cold, dry air. So it's really that loss of inside air and the replacement by much drier air that constitutes the total moisture loss from the space. So we should calculate what that total moisture loss is. And then how do we make up for that moisture loss? Well, we do so in two ways. One is by way of the latent load of these 35 occupants. That helps make up for some of that loss. And the second way is through humidification. So humidification is what we're looking for. We want to know how much moisture the humidifier should supply. It's going to be the difference between the total moisture loss and the latent load of the occupant. So let's write that down to sort of formalize it. The total moisture loss equals the latent occupant load plus the humidification. And that's really the big idea of this problem. Let's write it using some variables that we can reference throughout the problem. What do we really mean when we say moisture loss? Well, that's a rate at which some mass of water vapor is being lost to the outside. So we'll call that m dot, a mass flow rate of water. And I'll use another subscript for total to make a clear distinction between the next two, which will be the latent occupant load. We'll call that m dot of water for the occupants. And I'm just making these subscripts up so we can keep track of everything because they're all mass flow rates of water plus the mass flow rate of humidification, how much water vapor are we adding to the air? So again, m dot water of the humidification system. So we'll specify 
the occupant latent load first, and then we'll calculate the total moisture loss, and then we'll subtract and find the humidification load. So let's start with the occupants. We can take a look at table 40.4. That tells us how much heat people produce at different levels of effort. So we'll say that these folks are standing or walking or doing light work. And based on that, I come up with a latent load, which is adjusted for the assumption that it's half male and half female of about 200 BTU per hour per person. Obviously, if the people were sitting or exercising, it would be a lot less or a lot more, but this is a good reasonable average number to use. And then we know that there's 35 people. So that's 7,000 BTUs per hour total. But we said we wanted to find the mass flow rate of water that's being added to the air by the occupants. What we just found was the amount of energy. This is the equivalent energy of that water vapor that they've added. So we can go between these energy per unit time units and a mass per unit time by using the enthalpy of vaporization. In other words, the amount of energy that would be required to change the state of liquid water to a vapor, or vice versa if water vapor were condensing, the amount of energy that would be released. That's the latent heat of vaporization. And that changes as a function of temperature. We can look up that value in the steam table. So we go to the steam table that's organized by temperature at 23A in the MERM, and we find H sub FG at a temperature of 75. And it's organized by every two degrees, so you can find it at 74 degrees and 76 degrees and take the average. It's not that precise. It doesn't change that much. So let's just say this is approximately 1050 BTU per pound. And that's BTU per pound of water, of course, because we're talking about water vapor. And now we can use the fact that the latent heat, which has energy units, that's the 7,000 BTUs per hour, is equal to the mass flow rate of water times the latent heat of vaporization. So now we know this, and we know this, we can solve for m dot. And now I'm going to come back to using these subscripts for clarity. This m dot is actually the mass flow rate of water vapor produced by occupants, the latent occupant load. So m dot w for the occupants equals 7,000 BTUs per hour divided by 1050 BTU per pound, which is 6.67 pounds per hour. So we just found this number. Now we're going to find the total, and however much is not generated by the occupants, the rest will have to be done by the humidification. So let's find out the total moisture loss now. 